Good. Um, I guess we could get some games in and go from there. Like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to point anything out. Um, and like I said before, even if you have any questions after today, today, feel free to send me a message on Discord and I'll try my best to get back to you. But other than that, I guess uh, I'm good to go if you are.
Yeah. Yeah, for sure. One of the most important things when it comes to fighting Diddy, especially as a character like Sephiroth, where you have to pick your buttons really wisely, is I I like to describe it as separating the matchup into two different matchups. Uh, and it's whether he has banana in hand or not. When he doesn't have banana in hand, do you have access to more of your moveset, especially at the mid-range? Um, especially if you're someone like Sephiroth. So your goal is to... Um, steal stage control from him, put pressure on him to at least make it a little harder for him to pull banana. He's definitely going to get it, of course, because it's not a difficult thing to accomplish, but that should be more of your mindset to at least put some more sort of pressure on him that you wouldn't be able to do if he had banana in his hand. And when, then he, when he does have banana in hand, your goal should kind of be going back to that step one. Like, what can I do to bait him into throwing it so I can go back to fighting him without it? So it's a lot of empty movement. Um, you're not really pressuring from the mid range because he he can essentially like kind of whiff punish most characters because the banana is like it's kind of, I like to view it as kind of like a, a a sword attack just with like a lot of range. So he's essentially just outranging and whiff punishing pretty much every character in the game if, if they swing first. So your goal should be to see what you can do to see. How to get the Diddy Kong player to bite and preemptively get rid of their banana. Um, especially if you can put yourself between the banana and Diddy and it's just like, let's say it's like on the other corner of the stage for a while. You know, giving you some some time to fight him without it. That's like kind of like the best case scenario for fighting him. But it's really important to understand once he does have banana in hand, the things you were doing a few seconds ago, like, you know, pressing aerials at the mid range or F tilting with Sephiroth, whatever it may be. Like, a lot of that's off the table for the time being. And it's it's definitely exhausting, but this is usually the most consistent approach from my experience when it comes to fighting Diddy. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I know from your uh, doc you asked about pop gun canceling. Um, I actually do three different kinds of pop gun cancels. Um, I'll just go into a match and just show them off real quick. <laughs> so the first one is actually, you're required to hold the shield button. So if I jump out of shield while still holding it and then press B, it'll just automatically cancel it. So I like to do this one a lot in neutral, cause especially because it's easier out of like a short hop. So it's just nice little like burst movement. Um, the other one I do is pop gun cancel aerial, which is uh, B. Uh, you hold the B button or a special button. Uh, jump plus grab in a direction on the control stick for an aerial. So this one requires a double jump. So they, they kind of nicely complement each other, the two different kinds. Because this one, I can do it while I'm like uh, just grounded and neutral and this one I can do more so like when I'm chasing someone or like I need movement but I didn't shield on the ground beforehand or I'm a disadvantage or something and then the other one is pop gun cancel specials which is that uh, which is B let go of B press and hold it again and then uh, uh, you cancel the first one with a grab button and then you do a direction on the control stick for what you want to do. It's um, not as, I guess, intuitive as the other ones for like how you would use it. But I like to do it when I don't have a monkey flip because it allows for like some sort of movement to cancel into like barrels or something. Like this. Oh, I messed it up with an air dodge. But like there's rare times when I do do it when I'm really feeling it. But it's usually pretty rare. And something I guess I could... Oh, what's up? I was going to say something I think I could transition with uh, after you mentioned like, you know, fighting Diddy with and without banana and all that is kind of some of your questions from from the doc regarding Sephiroth, like ledge trapping and like, and um, I know you were asking about up, up throw Nair and I think I can kind of bridge into like a general topic when it comes to how I approach using Sephiroth in those scenarios. So I guess we could start with like up throw neutral air. So you ask like, you know, when do you go for a follow up? Like, what do you think is the best general thing to do? For me, I think your goal it should always be 
what can I do to make sure they like I don't put myself above them? Because let's say you do the up throw nair and you go for the forward air and it whiffs and now they're like under you. That's kind of like the worst case scenario. So I think it's really important to note like how they di the nair. Um, uh, you know, because depending on the percent or the di, the the forward air might not only be true, but the positioning when using your double jump to commit to it might be risky. And I, I and I think you were asking like, do I reset? I think Sephiroth is really all about resets and like prioritizing his own positioning rather than like brute forcing his own hit. Um, and that's probably one of the most important concepts with Sephiroth, if not the most important concept. And this kind of bridges into what you were asking about uh, scrapping. Um, saying like you lose scrapping situations a lot. How do you recommend I try to avoid them or get out of them when they occur? Um, I think a Sephiroth player's goal should be like always i like to call it like pre-positioning like you're always repositioning to avoid a potential scrap like let's say like we're fighting at like this range like i'm here and you're here um if you're going to whiff a move it should be like retreating uh, it should never be like towards diddy right because then um you're basically doing a 50 50 like if it hits great and if it doesn't i'm scrapping so basically, you always want all of your decision making to have layers to like a backup plan of when it, when it comes to positioning, because you know Sephiroth's you know most important ranges and most valuable ranges to play at are very specific because they're such like a a massive and like max range that I feel like you always have to be preemptively putting yourselves in the in that spot, or or else your opponent's going to be constantly cl closing the gap, and you're going to be scrapping and scrambling rather than like you know, staying one step ahead. It's easier said than done, but uh, a lot of it comes down to, I like to call it like, you know, the art of like not really pressing anything at all in Smash and prioritizing the small victories like stage control and like small hits and, you know, that's really the, some of the gist of Sephiroth's like neutral. And even the same could be said about, you know, some of your questions about ledge trapping. Um, Let's shopping in general, but especially from Sephiroth's perspective, because I would say, like, objectively, his true punishes on ledge options are pretty poor um, when it comes to reactionary ledge trapping, because F-Tilt is slightly too slow to be a true reaction, even, like, offline. Um, but what he does have is he has, you know, such so much range that his, like, presence is really great corner pressure. So I think finding the balance of Putting the pressure on the ledge options they choose, but making sure you're standing your ground and holding that stage control and applying corner pressure, because that's where you're going to get a lot of data and conditioning, and that's where you're going to end up getting a lot of kills. And the hardest thing about that is staying on top of that, because a lot of your kills aren't going to be like, oh, I see a neutral get up kill. Oh, I see a jump kill. Oh, I see a roll kill, because it's so hard to truly react to those things that you should be working with some sort of conditioning to successfully land those. So it's, I think it's a really important balance of, you know, putting that pressure on, but still like making sure you're not giving up stage control. Cause from our first match, like, let, like when I was like on the ledge, you were around like here. So he, what that says is the decision you make to try to cover the ledge, if it works like great. And if it doesn't, you might get reversaled, you know, worst case scenario. But the other scenario is I get out of the off the ledge and I get out of the corner and now you're cornered and I'm I have center stage. That's like, you know, the opposite of what I would say Sephiroth wants. If if anything, Sephiroth wants that stage control and that corner pressure even more than a specific hit. Just because he gets so much data and so much conditioning out of it, and it's just much more comfortable. Like for example, when someone neutral get ups in uh, against Sephiroth, usually it's like the you know, you, you F-tilt their shield. Um, as frustrating it is, as it is to not just get the F-tilt outright and get a stock or something, it's relatively nice shield pressure, it's safe on shield, and it becomes like a scary situation for them, yeah. Exactly. Those are the moments you want to pay the most attention to and you want to hold on for later. Even if you're not necessarily punning in, punishing them right then and there, that's where you might win a game or close a stock because, you know, 
this is like a universal situation that you're going to deal with in every single matchup. You know, everyone has to grab the ledge, everyone has to escape the corner, everyone has to get off ledge. So rather than a character that has the the frame data and the tools to kind of reactionary rinse and repeat, you kind of have to take it as, you know, really important data and going back to being too close to the ledge, you're going to miss out like a few key steps. Um, because if you're really close on your ledge trap, if, it, if you get your ledge trap, great, but if you don't, um, all you're getting is the option they picked off ledge. You're not getting that, that phase where the corner pressure phase, like do they jump out of shield, do they roll, do they drop shield, do they crouch? Uh, you're not getting any of that because you're kind of just scrapping like you would in on stage. Like it kind of becomes like a guessy scrappy kind of scenario. So you're missing out on a lot. Um, and I think Sephiroth really needs that information to keep up, especially when it comes to taking stocks. Um, and I, I, that's the most important thing for me. Um, let me actually select Sephiroth myself to visualize something. Yeah, so that's one of the more interesting things about um, Sephiroth's ledge trapping. So, he does have tools to generally ledge trap. Neutral air covers, like, you know, a, a generous amount of space, like, and it's fast enough to where, like, you can, you know, keep up the ledge trap. Down tilt is, like, meaty enough and fast enough to cover some options while also hitting ledge hangs and two framing some characters. Uh, grab is obviously a nice thing to just throw them back off stage and repeat, but none of this obviously results in a stock. So I think it's really up to you to judge the pace of the match and, you know, uh, you know, what percent they're at or something, because it's all about finding that balance of the true ledge traps with things like this and this and, uh, and like something like that, and then just prioritizing corner pressure above all else. I think it really depends on how you think the match is going. Like, do you already have a feel for their uh, ledge timings or options? Are you in the lead and you're willing to, like, put some more pressure on with just the small hits and just rinse and repeating them because uh, you think you might get an edge guard or you think you might get a jump read or an air dodge read? It's it's really, like, I think a, a feel in the moment kind of thing. Because um, sometimes, you know, they, my opponent might be at, like, you know, 150, but I'll still take the forward throw you know, depending on the matchup because I can kind of just checkmate them with a counter or an edge guard off stage in comparison to just like sitting back and trying to get a, a raw kill move. Uh, I think it's definitely matchup dependent. Like for example, if you're playing a character like, uh, let's say Pokemon Trainer, where the Pokemon aren't really great, uh, they don't have great air mobility or like great specific ledge options. So Sephiroth, even though he's not the best ledge chopper in the world, he can at least like rinse and repeat them and like throw them off the stage and like rack up some decent damage. But if you're fighting a character like Game & Watch, who has a lot of reversal potential, um, specific ledge options that are just better than some other characters, you might want to prioritize your own stage control and corner pressure. Um, so I think it depends on how well you're executing matchups and stuff like that. So it's kind of hard to say a concrete answer for like when to to do what kind of style. And it also depends on frame advantage. Like it depends on when you get into position versus when they grab ledge. Like if they grab ledge and you're like right where you're standing, then yeah, the best case scenario is to like focus on like standing your ground and like uh, going to the corner pressure phase. But if you have time to set up, you kind of get to choose and uh, you have more time to kind of gauge it. Um, another thing you're mentioning is like two frames. So my, I guess my biggest philosophy, other than obviously like hopefully you time it well, wh whether it's like a down tilt or a off the slash or a down air, is like it's always better to be early rather than late, um, because best case scenario if you mess up a two frame you at least get to reposition afterwards and they're not like getting off the ledge for free and like cornering you or getting a reversal. So my biggest thing is like, uh, you know I, I I'm always down to go to go for it and time it earlier rather than like be late because if they're if you're late on like something like this 
you're most likely not hitting it and you're getting hit yourself. So that's kind of like the worst case scenario. Once again, that depends on matchups as well. It depends on how much time you have to set up, especially when it comes to something like this, because I'm pretty sure Sephiroth's down air is like at least frame 19 or something. And Octa Slash is even longer than that. So, um, I think it's really important for Sephiroth to know his frame advantage when it comes to ledge trapping and edge guarding. Because if you kind of brute force like a two frame attempt or an edge guard attempt, once again, like like I said, you're sacrificing a lot of potential data because you're kind of skipping all of the, like the ledge trap phases at once while going for a kill or a hit. So I think it's really, really important to know your frame advantage. And uh, when it comes to neutral, I actually kind of play it a similar way. Um, like with the way we were talking about like getting data and like kind of collecting how they're playing their disadvantage, especially uh, on the ledge. Actually, something I'd like to mention is actually something like this. Um, when you up throw neutral air someone, it's very similar to the ledge. You really want to see like what they do. Like So when you land that neutral air, you want to see... Do they air dodge immediately out of hit stun? Do they think they have to guess? Are they double jumping? Are they drifting to the ledge? Are they trying to land on top of me? Because you have general answers to all of those things. It's just hard to, you know, do it reactionary and like keep them in like uh, disadvantage. And it, that, that's, that's really important information that you could connect later on too. Like uh, something I like to do a lot, um, especially when it gets to like higher percents, like maybe, um, Maybe slightly higher than this. Like maybe around here. Um, I'll do something like an up throw. And I'll kind of set up a scenario for myself. Like I'll do this. And then I'll do like a landing neutral air. Um, because when I do that landing neutral air. It's kind of like a visual cue to my opponent. And I like to see if they kind of get. Uh, kind of bite the bait. And it's a really easy way to buffer an instant double jump. Out of the neutral air. Um, so basically that's like one of my general setups for early kills or like mid percents when it comes to juggling with Sephiroth because if you just go for a, a straight up up air obviously it's very reactable and especially if you chase too far they might get under you and like I said that's like one of the worst case scenarios for the character in my opinion um because not only are you sacrificing your own advantage now you just have to scramble to reset and get into a comfortable spot and like we were talking about for Sephiroth sometimes he can't afford to do that because it just takes him too long to get comfortable again. Um, so instant double jumping all of your back airs and up airs are really important. Because it allows you to like have lagless uh, aerials that you otherwise wouldn't have. Um, and basically buffering, buffering instant double jumps out of actions make it a little bit easier. Um, so you could even do it out of the up throw animation itself if you want. Like that. Um... But basically what I do is I like to t hold on to that information because if I do this during that up throw in the air dodge, the the instant double jump up air usually goes right into a guaranteed hit to punish the air dodge. And if they and if they like if it's a fast faller, like I'll buffer like down tilts to, to put pop them back up into the air. Um so it's basically a good way to throw out like a visual bait and like, you know, keep up the pressure while not over committing to anything because you don't have any true follow-ups at some of those moments. Um, so it's kind of similar to what we were talking about with the corner pressure, but in a, you know, more so from like a juggling perspective. <clears throat> Hopefully that makes some sense because it, I know you mentioned like you, uh, I think in your Metify message, like, you know, how to use up air specifically, because it, it's a really great move, but it can be really hard to know when to place it just because it's so committal. It's definitely a strange move, but it's it's a it's a really important one at the same time. <sighs> All right. It it also seems like you mentioned like how do you actively think about parrying? So I actually think this is a great question because um, Sephiroth has some very specific stuff, especially like out of shield. I know this isn't parrying specifically. But sometimes I find myself like kind of sitting in shield for too long because I'm hoping they hit my shield so I can do like a footstool down air with Sephiroth. Um, but I think that kind of goes against what I was talking about of always like pre-positioning with him. 
So I think it's really important to try to stay as reactionary as possible rather than like hoping they run into your shield or run into your parry. Because if you're too stationary for too long, you're kind of inviting um, the opponent to like exploit, you know, Sephiroth's biggest weaknesses, which is, like, you know, like scrapping and frame data, you know, out of shield. So as great as like something like Footstool Dare is or like a parry reversal is, I think, you know, you threaten it and then you automatically like if it doesn't happen, you're already like repositioning. You know what I mean? Because um, I find myself doing doing that a lot when I'm really trying to practice like footstool dare or like looking for parries in a certain matchup and then I realize I've been standing there for like over a second and uh it just makes makes Sephiroth's life a lot harder in my opinion um hopefully that helps in some way I kind of tried to generalize some of your questions into like a you know an overall play style if that makes sense Yeah. It kind of goes against, like, his own strengths if you're, like, too stationary for too long. Just because you're trying to, like, you know, work on his weaknesses and, like, cover up his weaknesses. It definitely... As much as I want to practice it in real games as much as possible, sometimes my opponent is just too disciplined to give it to me, so I just kind of have to accept it. Um, but yeah, I, I something I wanted to mention that kind of connects into all of this is... Um, Kind of talking about playing neutral um i don't know how much of my sephiroth you've watched or how much you've heard me talk about the character but something i like to say a lot is uh i actually don't think of him as like a a sword character um like obviously he is but i like to view him more as like closer to link rather than to lucina if that makes sense like i think he's more of a a hybrid than a pure sword character and i think that's one of the biggest misunderstandings of the character right now because if you look at the way people play him they kind of just try to wall out with range um but the reason i think that's a a hard idea is because obviously because of his frame data and his like landing lag on some things it gives a lot of opponents like windows to inch forward or close the gap and it kind of goes against what i was just talking about about like repositioning and all that so I think in neutral, most of his best tools actually aren't sword moves. And I think you start to weave in Sephiroth's sword moves when you have some sort of general advantage. Like I said, like if you hit a shield with something strong, that's where you might like try to catch a jump or a defensive option with the sword move. But if you're playing like a even neutral, I think his best tools are of course like neutral air, side B, down tilt, grab. It's usually not sword related, just because it's his best tools to keep up with like you know, the general character, like, because most characters are usually faster than him in some category, whether it's speed or frame data or both. So I think you have to use a lot of moves that aren't sword related to keep up because, like, let's say we were shielding back to back, like, next to each other. Most Sephiroth players would probably do this. And once again, it's one of those scenarios where if it works, it's like kind of like a 50-50 whether you get put into a good spot or a bad one. If it works, great. Um, especially if it kills or something, but if it doesn't, you know, your opponent in that window might have like inched forward and shielded it and now you're in the same exact spot again, if not getting punished. Yeah. So something I like to do is I'm always trying to do something a little less committal. Um, and a lot of that time that, that leads to me just focusing on like platform movement or pressing nothing at all. And it led to me like having this idea of like not using many sword moves. But if I do, well, basically what I would replace this with is actually this. So it's like a slightly faster, um, more safe, um, while being like a similar idea. I do a lot of reverse aerial rush, like retreating forward airs. A lot of people use reverse aerial rush to turn around while approaching someone. But I think Sephiroth actually benefits a lot from it defensively because... Um, and it's also, I think Sephiroth is usually a little stronger when he's facing his opponent at the mid-range, because you have F-Tilt, Down-Tilt, Grab, Neutral Air, like, it just feels a little bit uh, less clunky, while just being obviously less laggy and faster, while being, like, a similar pressure tool. Obviously, the hardest thing is you have to, like, perfectly fast-fall them a lot, especially against a, sp a s smaller character, but, um, hopefully that makes sense in some way, and... 
Another thing I like to mention is, uh, I think his most important tools are neutral air and side B. So for side B, um, the weirdest thing about it is this situation right here, where it's kind of like negative on hit, which really sucks. So basically, my biggest piece of advice for it is to try to be as mobile with it as possible, because you don't want to be caught in that scenario. I've always said, like, I'd rather miss it and not get punished than, like, hitting it and getting punished for hitting it kind of thing. So I do a lot of, like, rising side B, because you can double jump out of it. It's a nice little visual bait. Like, see how your opponent reacts to it. Do they jump up with you? Do they shield? Like, you know, kind of taking it as information in neutral. Um, and I also like to do... I don't know if you know or if you've never noticed how... Joker players use their non R sense side B. They do it like this a lot. They like jump backwards with it. They're never really doing it in place. I think for Shadow Flare, it can be a similar thing. I try to be mobile with it, especially the uncharged one. And if I'm charging it, I usually like land while charging it, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm like always trying to be mobile with it. Cause if you're charging it like right here, it gives your, op your opponent, like, you know, it's a straight, it's just a straight line hitbox, so they might just jump over it and hit you in the process. But if you're, like, repositioning with it, um, it makes it a lot safer while, you know, you're still, like, putting some projectile pressure out there. And it's basically very similar to what we were talking about, about how you always want to be pre-positioning into Sephiroth's, like, comfort zone. Just because your opponent's always going to be inching forward and closing the gap to, you know, try to exploit his weaknesses. Um, I also do a lot of this in neutral, not because it actually does something substantial, um, but I like to see how my opponent reacts, kind of similar to throwing a Shadow Flare out there, regardless if it hits or not, like, you just want to see how your opponent plays neutral against Sephiroth, because since he usually outranges the character, they usually have to do something to deal with that, right? Do they play very shield heavy? Do they want to prioritize center stage? Do they... Do they use a lot of platform movement? Do they jump and try to anti-air you? So when I do something like this, I'm kind of looking for my opponent to once again kind of take the bait and kind of give me some sort of information to work with. Because once again, the more you condition or have, you know, more information to work with, the more likely you are to be able to keep up and, you know, get kills when you need them and get ledge traps when you need them. Because it's hard for him to play just the typical reactionary smash game. He kind of has to stay ahead of the human being behind the controller. Um, but like, let's say I do this and my opponent jumps and they're trying to like air to air me. I'm like, okay, maybe that means they're the type to jump out of hit stun. Maybe that means they're the type to jump off ledge. And I'm always trying to stay like one step ahead of myself. Um, and just trying to see if I'm ready to, you know, punish any sort of habit that I might be getting a whiff of. And even if it's wrong, you know what I mean? There's so many more things to look at, you know, then you can go to the ledge options and you can go to the corner pressure and things like that. And I think Sephiroth really has to take note of those things because once again, I don't think he can keep up otherwise. Sorry if I rambled a bit. It's basically that's like my, the gist of my play style in general, but especially with Sephiroth. Yeah, that's basically my whole playstyle in general, is I'm basically trying to connect what my opponent does to the rest of the game the whole time. And any small thing I can do in neutral, that even if it's just a small visual bait, and that's literally it, it's like useless other than that, maybe it's something, you know what I mean? Even if my opponent doesn't react to what I'm doing in neutral, like all the small movements, even if they're doing nothing at all, I still try to view it as information, like, oh... Maybe they're really patient. Maybe they'll be shield heavy, right? Maybe they are playing it slow and they're not rushing anything. So maybe I can do an empty jump grab later on, or maybe they'll neutral get up into shield. You know, I, I try to connect as many things as possible. And I think the more you play, play the game with this kind of perspective, the easier it'll be for you to like take advantage of things quicker and quicker. And you'll start to categorize players and play styles and matchups and stuff like that. <clears throat> I think there's another really core thing you asked that I wanted to stay on top of. I think you asked about, um, I think, landing aerials. Uh, 
right? I think you mentioned like you, the best way to try to avoid, you know, attacking out of disadvantage and like landing on top of people, right? Something like that. Um, yeah. Um, the most important thing I think is making sure you're not using your resources too early in disadvantage. Because for something for someone like Sephiroth, that's like usually retreating like full fully defensively. Like he doesn't have like quick reversal tools or something like that. I think it's really important to stay disciplined and stay patient and hold on to your resources. Um, like for example, like let's say you're getting juggled by like a Captain Falcon like up air string. Um, the most important thing in those situations is to guarantee survival. If you're quick to like press a button or press an air dodge, it basically becomes a 50-50 whether you like live or die sometimes. Um, so it's basically like, oh, instead I'll like take the up airs, right? Like kind of cutting your losses. Sephiroth has to do a lot of that. And not, it's not always about like taking specific hits. Sometimes it's about going to the ledge. Like, all right, I'm getting juggled right now. I find myself getting parried or I'm like getting out of shield punished or I'm like doing landing aerials and I'm like scrapping and having a hard time getting comfortable. You know, for me, it's like, all right, let's change the phase of the disadvantage state that I'm in right now and go to the ledge. And it's not, it's not even about like whether it's a better scenario for you or not. It's about making your opponent work as hard as possible for all of their hits. And if you change the pacing and change the phase of the game, you know, you're putting your opponent to a different test. Like, all right, you're juggling me. What, how do you ledge trap? Uh, all right, I'm off the ledge. How do you corner pressure? Not only are you making them work as hard as possible for it, rather than doing like the 50-50, whether you air dodge or attack kind of thing, it's also giving you a chance to collect data for their, your opponent's advantage state. And maybe you'll find something to exploit later on. Like, let's say I go to the ledge and my opponent's playing like, like Wolf. And they go for like a full hop back air to try to, to catch a, a jump off ledge but they do it really preemptively as i'm grabbing ledge i can kind of see that as a cue to like roll and now i'm out of the corner i'm out of disadvantage and now they're cornered um but if i'm if i was too quick to play disadvantage and just like landing on top of them and air dodging into them and trying to force my way out of it then i i might not have ever caught something like that but I think if you take it really slow and have the perspective of what can I do to make my opponent work as hard as possible for their hits, you'll survive longer and you also may find something to exploit your opponent to survive even longer and maybe even get a reversal or, you know, take a stock or something like that later on in the match. And I think for Sephiroth, he has a very traditional disadvantage state for the most part. So once again, you kind of have to play it, play the human being behind the controller. But there are a few things I like to do. Um, when it comes to escaping disadvantage that I'd like to show off. It's basically all blade dash related. Um, I think the base, best way to, to, to view blade dash is kind of like as a better fox illusion that can like, you know, you have more angles and it goes through shield. So for example, um, obviously Sephiroth is really tall and light and it's hard for him to escape the corner. Um, with a lot of those stats, like he has a... His grab isn't very large. He doesn't have like great reversals out of shield. So it can be hard to get off the ledge and get out of the corner, despite him having a lot of specifics unique to himself, like, you know, the the, the wall stab and everything, or like Octa Slash. Like he can be there for a while, but actually getting out of the corner can be a bit tough. Something I like to do is when I'm in the corner, I try not to force it. Like Sephiroth has pretty laggy rolls, so I'm, I don't try to like force myself out of the corner with that. Um, so what I personally like to do is I like to take it slow, like inch forward, you know, threaten parries. Um, and if my opponent like bursts or like jump, I just blade dash the center stage. Um, so if I can catch my opponent swinging first, whether I'm in the corner or in disadvantage, I just pick the best spot to land. Like for example, let's say we were playing right now and I was getting juggled and I see you commit to like jumping with an air dodge or jumping with an up air, then, and I'm like right here, then I'll just choose to like land here and like kind of just take it from there. So if, if you can catch your opponent swinging too early uh, and give yourself the chance to like reactionary get off, 
get out of disadvantage. It's definitely the best case scenario. Because what should be happening is if you're in disadvantage, you have to swing first. Or you have to pick the first option. Especially when it comes to getting off the ledger in the corner. But if you can find something to exploit out of your opponent, it'll make your life a lot easier. If they're giving you the privilege to play reactionary in a situation where you shouldn't have that privilege, it can make Sephiroth's life a lot easier. And I think Blade Dash is his best mix-up for that. Especially because you can even do things like crossing up a shield from like diagonally from above like this. And like in some matchups that can be like relatively safe. Um, so there's some interesting things you can do if you have like the patience. But if you're too quick to do something like this and your opponent hasn't even committed to anything yet, that's where it gets like really linear and really obvious and telegraphed. So you, I think you do have to be really careful with it. But it is a really, really valuable mix-up for him. I think if he didn't have that, then, you know, it would be really hard for me to even play him, to be quite honest. <clears throat> Hopefully all of that helps. I'm sorry if I rambled a bit. We can get back to some matches. Yeah, exactly. You can, and something interesting is you have like a very split second to like adjust the angle in real time. You don't have to just pick your angle and that's it. You can kind of start it in one angle and then like change it into another really fast. So you can also use that as kind of like a visual bait. Um, like for example, like let's say you start it up, your opponent dashes to the direction you're angling it and then you go like straight down, right? Like things like that are, are, uh, really possible um but it's definitely not easy because it, I, I it's it's really easy to just like kind of pick and hope and try to just like completely reset but it's definitely more of a reactionary tool than anything uh but it can also be the kind of thing going back to what we were talking about about taking the right hits to guarantee survival and to put yourself into a different spot it can kind of be that kind of thing too like uh like, oh, I'm going to blade dash the center stage and I'm willing to take like a, a dash attack or a grab from X character because it's better than like being on the ledge and risking dying. You know what I mean? Like it can also be used for things like that. Or it's, especially if you're tr specifically trying to get wing or something, there's a lot of things you can do like, oh, I'm going to go for this. And if it works, great. And if it doesn't, like at least I'm not going to die and maybe it'll even give me wing. It can also be used in, in uh, situations like that. Um, which it can be situational and matchup specific, and obviously you don't want to get hit on purpose ever, but sometimes Sephiroth does have to cut his losses.
Yeah, so the most important thing is to know uh, how many uses the banana has, because when he pulls it um, and holds on to it, there are two uses. So if he hits you once, that means it would pop up and it would still be there. Um, but uh, otherwise it only has one use, and that means the next time it hits the ground, it'll disappear. Um, if he does something like a Z-drop aerial or tosses it, then it's guaranteed to have only one use. So the most important thing, if you get a, uh, a hold of it, is knowing how many uses it has. So if you catch it like out of him pulling it or something like that, or if you catch it before it hits the ground, that means it's fresh. And that means you could place it somewhere um, if you would like, or you can jump up and throw it into the air or something if you wanted to like, you know, be off the, out of the equation for a little bit. But it is important to know how many uses it has because it kind of determines if you want to hold on to it yourself or if you don't. And it kind of becomes up to you depending on what you prefer. Because you can do Z-Drop Aerials yourself. Sephiroth can do like a lot of Shadow Flares, you know, Blade Dash away and like hold on to it for a while and like make it a little frustrating for Diddy to get it again. Um, but I think it, the best case scenario is like you put it on like one corner of the stage and you kind of fight him while he doesn't have it for like 10 seconds or something like that, right? Um, because you, you, have, you, you want access to your ground moves and no matter how you how you do it if you have banana in, hand, in your hand you can't do things like f tilt or anything like that and that does make it a little uh, pretty hard but yeah also i guess paying attention to like you know when he pulls it if you can find something specific to exploit that's obviously nice too um I think being at the range where you can threaten to burst and hit him for it is a big deal. And seeing does he choose to like risk pulling it anyway or does he not. And that can help a lot with like, you know, fighting him without banana in hand for longer periods of time. Um, or, or not, depending on, you know, how pressured they feel by your presence.
think we have time for one more match. Okay, cool. Once again, uh, I know I didn't answer every single question in the doc, but I hope today helped in some way. And if you ever have any other questions, feel free to send me a message. Uh, anytime. Well, uh, GG's, and it was really nice talking to you about Sephiroth and stuff, and uh, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Have a good one. Bye.